Welcome back. The third part of the UC Summer 2024 update has released. And we have map expansion, we have fishing, we have new classic cars. There is so much to cover in this video. But before we do, please consider subscribing. Help us reach 350k over this summer. Well, with that said, let's get into this. So we're here, and this is, I suppose, the start of the main map changes over on Riverside uh, Drive. If we open up the map, we can take a look up north, and this is where the majority of changes can be found. You can see now, instead of Riverside Drive just merging with the highway, there's actually now an on-ramp and dedicated off-ramp, and the highway is extended slightly. So heading up here, this is now the on-ramp. If you don't take the turn off there, then you're heading up here onto the highway. And you see over there to our left, that is where you come off the highway. Now we've got this massive, massive new bridge here. These three arches, domes, I'm not entirely sure what the proper word for this is, but they are really, really good looking. Now, unfortunately, from what we can tell, you can't actually climb up here. I'm sure some people will be disappointed about, but overall it looks really good and we still got the waterfall over there behind the bridge. You may also have noticed then that the Springfield Lake has expanded and well, you would be correct. As you can see, we've now got electricity pylons going all through the middle. We've got a fishing pier over there, which we'll get to very shortly. And over here we have a dam, though interestingly enough, the water remains at the same level. We'll circle back to this lake in a short bit, but if we take this uh, off-ramp here going into Springfield, you can see just how much the highway has actually been raised. I'd say two, maybe two and a half times the height. And you can see where Ollie is walking up, this has all been tiled off. And I'd assume if you get enough speed and hit over these lamp poles, you may just be able to use this as a ramp. So uh, we'll have to test that at some stage. Again, we're going up here and just how much it is raised up now. You used to be able to easily drive onto the highway from here, but no, this is a full-on cliff face now. The next change uh, from the highway is just up here, where you used to be able to take a turn off. Turning left would uh, get you into Hyrule Park, and turning right would head you over to the farms. But again, we have been elevated so much that there is now actually a tunnel going underneath the highway leading us nicely to the next change, which is this addition of a small district office building, as well as a new High Rock Park logo, Brave the Wilderness. It looks very nice. Now, the building is the exact same as the one at the construction site, of course, with the uniforms and spawns removed. But I would for sure love to see this used in roleplay servers for state departments or highway patrol. I think that would be a great building for that. A couple of parking spaces out here. Nothing too crazy, but you could definitely use this. And then again, Higher Up Park new logo, which is being used all over. And it's replacing the, I suppose, the old RCPD logo that they used or without any of the RCPD text. So I think it looks pretty nice, nice and fitting. The last real change with the highway comes just up here at the end. Yeah, you can also see how much we're raised up. If you had a Bronco or something, I'm sure you'd be able to drive over here and directly onto that trail. That is how much the highway has been raised in the map. Got a couple of like concrete patches in which you could turn around with. And a change that I'm sure a lot of people will be happy to see is the fact that they removed all the rocks from over here. I do not know why, but yeah, for whatever reason, all the rocks have been removed. The lamp pole still stands, but all the rocks have been removed. So taking this exit off the highway is much less of a pain, which is really cool. And I'm sure you can do some jumps up there or something. So that is all of the changes to the highway. We're gonna stop by in River City to check out the underground parking garage, and then we'll head back to the lake to check out some fishing. Now you can see where Ollie is going down there. This building has finally been opened up and you can drive underneath into the underground parking. And interestingly enough, this isn't the only building. We head over here and free cam over to this building here. This as well has been opened up. You can drive down there, an entrance and an exit. And surprisingly, they've actually added an entrance and exit to the parking garage, as well as changing a few of the textures around the building. Very interesting, and I'm not sure anyone was expecting that at all. So if we head down here, there's a very nice mood lighting, I suppose, in here. It's kind of this industrial yellowish hue. Looks really nice. So anyways, you can see the ramps. That's the ramp up into the parking garage. That's the ramp to civilian spawn, and that's the ramp over to, um, well, I suppose, close to Riverside. And there's a bunch of spaces in here. I cannot wait to do some car meets. It's going to be so much fun, and I like how they linked it all up. So you can almost use this as an underground tunnel to get from one place to another. 
great way to uh, outrun the cops. So we finally take this exit off here to the right and we can either go over the dam or we can park up in this small dirt parking here. I'll show you in free camera real quick, but there is a couple of parking spaces here. Uh, you can then head down to this pier where you can sit down, grab a fishing rod and go fishing. Now, interestingly, there is a boat. However, you cannot drive these at all. There's actually another one sitting on the lake over there, currently not loaded in, but um, yeah, just something interesting to point out. Now we head over this dam here. This is replacing the old Spring Creek uh, Road Bridge. I think it looks pretty good. Um, not really too much to say about it. I'm sure you could do some good role plays with that. We then drop down here and all of this is relatively the same except this has been extended slightly. This is like the old parking area we used to have. Lots more parking over here. Now we've got a fishing shack here. Molly is uh, fishing at the moment, but we've got Bayo Bill. Uh, over here where you can sell your fish. We'll go ahead and grab ourselves a fishing rod there. All right, so let's come over here. Let's cast our rod into the water. You can see just over there, there is a red, I, I don't know. I don't know any fishing terms, but there's a red um, flotation thing. There you go. When it's pulled under the water, that means a fish has got hold of it. There's a mini game on the right side of your screen. Basically need to click to keep this red line inside the green box. And there we go. We have caught a prank fish. This is a fairly common fish. We can go over here to sell the fish. Yeah, that's $105 each. There we go. We've got an abyss fish. So different model there. We can go and sell that. And that is $300 total. Sell that. Both of the fish go and we get some money. So from what we found, there's roughly seven to 10 fish that you can catch, each with a different rarity and each sell for a different price. The most expensive fish we found is the galaxy fish. Not only does this sell for $2,600, but it also unlocks an exclusive Galaxy plate. And stay tuned since we'll have a video. And stay tuned since we'll have a video breaking down everything to do with fishing in the EOC dropping very soon. Thank you, Bill. We will be back. Some nice seating over here overlooking the lake, and you can actually see another change over there in the distance, which is the addition of these fences, white picket fences around the houses that border onto the lake. These are the only houses that do have fences uh, surrounding their bike gardens, but I suppose it's a nice addition and uh, keeps them cordoned off from the public. So, as you have probably seen, the Classic Cars Game Pass is back. And with that, not only have there been a couple of remodels, but also new vehicles. So, Ollie spawned in the Foreman, I'll spawn in the L-15. Again, we'll have a full video that breaks down all of the new and updated classic cars to the game, so keep an eye out for that. But yeah, this is a Foreman that has been teased quite heavily in the lead up to the update. The back sloping, I find a bit uh, funny, but I really love the front of this thing. It looks really good. And in a blue or navy or gray, I think this is a beautiful looking car. On the other hand, we have a truck, a lot more rugged. You can see it actually reflecting quite a lot in my shaders. And something you can do with all these new remodels is open up the tailgate. We first saw that with the Cybertruck and you can now do that with all of the classic uh, vehicle remodels. Ollie has gone ahead and spawned in the sidestep version of this truck. And you can see just by looking at them, they are very similar designs. The front is near identical. The main change is when we get around to the rear. You can see this one looks a lot more industrial. Again, reminds me a lot of uh, Trevor's vehicle from GTA 5, whereas the uh, one over here looks more stock. I'm not a truck guy, so feel free to comment below any of the changes that you found. Now Ollie's gone ahead and spawned in the extended cab version. And again, this is almost a hybrid of the two. The front is near identical, except for these uh, lights on the top there. The mirrors have been extended slightly, and the cab and bed, of course, is slightly longer. Let me know which of these three models you prefer the best. Here is the Chevron Inferno. We have spawned in another truck, but this time it has the back covered up. So unfortunately, you can't open the tailgate. I think it looks really good. The model is, again, quite similar to the last few that we've seen, but I like the design overall. And over here, Ollie has spawned in the 1968 Sentinel Platinum. This has had an update as well at first. I didn't think it did, but yeah, looking over towards the back of the car, it definitely looks like it has been updated. Some very thin line tail lights over there, platinum written in fancy text on the rear, and the front kind of does remind me of an EV, but uh, I think it looks good regardless. 
So we're on the sheriff's department, but this also does work on police. We now have classic law enforcement vehicles. So we've got the Chevron Inferno and the Bullhorn Foreman, both of these which we did see um, added to civilian. They've now got a law enforcement counterpart. Before we check those out, I want to show you some more customization options we have that I think a lot of people will be very happy about. So we have the LED rotary light bar. This, from what I'm aware, is commonly used in places like New York, and I know a lot of roleplay servers are going to love seeing this in the game. We've also got the under mirror lights, so you can see those lights added to the underside of the mirrors there. Now, bringing one of the classic cars into the editor, we have a few options here, nothing too crazy. We've got the Rotary Bar Classic, which is the light that these are equipped with. We can equip a trailer hitch, so you can attach a trailer onto the back there. And then we've got a couple of uh, other changes like uh, Supervisor Livery, which uh, should add... Oh yeah, there you go, Supervisor Text there. Now, you may have seen one change as well as Ollie brings over the police version of this vehicle. We now have working gates at the sheriff's office and the entire parking lot is now cordoned off with fences. I'm very interested to see how this will work, especially in public servers. Going in, you have this keypad, same as the prison, but going out, the gate will automatically detect your vehicle uh, if you're on the department and uh, will just simply open. So we've got the sheriff's office, so we've got the sheriff's office livery here, as well as the police version. So these are the both of the cars that are available on both teams, just showcasing uh, both of the different liveries. You can see the push bar on the front is almost like a very early version of the Ram bar we have in game today. We've got a bit more of an advanced one on the Chevron here. Overall, I really love this addition and hopefully we'll see more classic cars coming to the law enforcement teams and maybe even teams like the fire department soon. That would be so, so cool. And I can already tell we're going to have a load of fun with some classic role plays. Heading over to the Gadget Shack, we have some changes here that we cannot forget about. Turned off shaders so we do not uh, flashbang ourselves when we go into the store. So a couple of new things. First of all, there is a civilian job here now. We can start the job. Doesn't require any uh, civilian job points. And you get this lovely uniform with a little Gadget Shack uh, employee ID around your neck. And then we can head over to shop for gadgets. And there is actually five new phones that we can purchase and use. So we have the Pairphone Retro, we have the Pairphone X, both of these inspired by Apple devices. We've got the Nebula G7, Nebula G20, and of course you can customize all the colors like a vehicle. And we have the Plus Ultra, really, really cool. So I've just purchased the Pairphone Retro and buying a new phone isn't the only customization option. If we get out of the phone, a lot of you are aware this is how the phone looks. I think it was update, summer update part one, they revamped the entire phone UI and this, this is a new interface, right? We're all familiar with this now. However, if we go and buy a non-Apple device, e.g. the Nebula G20, we'll get this in a blue this time, and because this isn't an Apple device, the interface has changed slightly. It is only the border uh, of the phone, none of the apps have changed, but I, that's a nice detail, I like that. So if you're an Apple fan, grab yourself an iPhone. If you're not, then uh, grab yourself one of the other ones. So you can see Ollie's opted for the G20. I've opted for the Pairphone Retro. Let me know in the comments below which phone you're gonna be using in game. Now we're moving on to the very small part of this update and I'm gonna increase my volume for this because with this update, they actually added new sound effects for running on different terrains. And here, this is the one for running on tarmac. This is the one for running through grass. You can hear this is the sound effect for running on metal. And this is the sound for running on wood. Rounding up this video, we have two new vehicles slash livery updates to the fire department. Over here, we have the Tahoe. And then over here, we have the paramedic SUV. I really love this uh, Tahoe. It actually lines in perfectly with the liveries we have in our roleplay server. And the vehicle overall looks really good. An interesting thing about this paramedic uh, SUV is they actually have the words paramedic flipped 180 degrees on the front there. So in real life, I believe that. So if you're looking in your rear view mirror, it actually looks like it's being spelled out the right way. Of course, we don't have that in UOC. So probably a lot of people are going to be wondering why it says paramedic written backwards. But no, overall, I think the livery works really nice. The design looks good. And I think it fits the fictionalized vehicles really nicely. So overall, 
10 out of 10 for me. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this update video. I'm so excited to play with all of the new features in game. I'm really, really happy with what PLC added through all of these three summer updates. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Subscribe for more content on this channel and I will see you all in the next one.